Welcome back to the Celtic Roundhouse episode two. We're back out in the woods and we're trying to finish off the foundations. As you can probably see behind me, we've already got two of the posts up. Uh, you can see us process all that in episode one. I'll put a link to that in the description above or up here somewhere. But today we've basically been digging holes, about 14 or so holes that we've got to dig. It's been, uh, it's been tough, back breaking work. It's clay, it's damp, it's wet. Uh, and it's making it quite tricky, it sticks on the spade. Those who have, who have dug in clay before, done any form of digging in clay before, will know the pain that we're going through. But we've done the holes, we're now preparing the posts and we're compressing that clay down with a stick to keep those posts nice and rigid. We, the aim for today really is to get all these posts in and then if we can, maybe prepare some of the beams ready for the rafters to lean on. Thanks to everyone who watched episode one, really appreciate it. You're going to enjoy this one because we are about to have a feast. Dustin has a pretty good Dutch, Dutch oven recipe uh, on the cards for us. I'm certainly looking forward to it. My stomach is certainly looking forward to it. And I hope you guys will enjoy it too. Thanks very much for watching this episode. Let's carry on with the adventure. I'm excited. Yes, <laughs> well needed. Uh, it's been what, about six months probably since has, our last it has. epic feast. But I need this after digging those holes and ramming those yeah. posts in. Yeah, they were, uh, they're back breaking work. Oh. Mm. That flavour. That sauce to go with it. Let's have a bit of duck. Do you know I'm just gonna chew into this duck. It's a caveman. This is a really good dish. Mm. Easy to do, right? Just in a Dutch oven, it just cooks itself. That's it, just leave it for a few hours. Well, it's one hour. And that's it, it meant that we could carry on being productive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. Obviously, I, I did a Dutch oven thing the other day, but it's nice to, Dutch ovens are great for this kind of thing where you can just leave it to cook. Exactly, Crack yeah. Crack on with some work and not have to worry about fire management too much because you mm. just get those embers, those coals hot enough and just, uh, just gonna, this is this is up there with the lamb copter, but the lamb copter <laughs> was something else. Those, that was that was out those of who world. know will know. <laughs> the lamb copter, oh, my head still hurts from that one. And we've uh, for those wondering, we have actually expanded the the side, the scale really of this of this shelter. We had it when we pegged it out last week. We had it fairly small. We only pegged it out roughly. We didn't do it by we did it by eye really, didn't we? We did, we did. But today we've measured it. We pretty much measured it without a tape measure. We've yeah. used a rope. <laughs> but we've made it a lot more symmetrical. We've made it maybe a metre, almost, well, we've yeah. made it a little bit wider and I think it's gonna be a lot more practical when it comes to living or, you know, overnighting in here because it means we can have a little fire inside, not too big, because remember we've got a thatch roof. <laughs> yeah. So a little <laughs> fire ticking over just to keep us warm, yeah. boil the kettle, maybe a little bit of cooking, nothing big. Just and, enjoy um, time in the woods. It really just makes it more well. spacious inside. Yeah, exactly. Well, Mike, I almost forgot the bread. Oh, oh, oh yes. Look at that, fresh bread. Fresh bread and just rip it off as you wish. Oh, bread and, bread and a, a duck. What is it, braised duck? Braised kind of duck, stew. that's oh. right, yeah. Braised duck. Look at that, and we've got the, got the rest of the sauce in the bottom of there. Oh, oh look at that. That is nice, man. So we've got two posts in here. You can see where we've, uh, the reason why we burnt it there is to help make it a little bit more rot resistant as it goes in the ground. Now the ground is actually really good for this kind of post work. Not good for digging, but look at this clay. It just compresses really nicely because it's damp. You can just squeeze it and it compresses. And we've been compressing it with a stick around the base of these upright posts. And that's really helped to keep these nice and solid and nice and secure in the ground. And we want these as tough as possible because that's going to take all the weight. We've got around about 12 more maybe. And uh, this is all we've been doing. So Dustin's just popping one in there. And then what we do is we grab small, well, big or small chunks of clay, preferably the best purer bits, put a couple of bits in there. And then with a, with a stick, like this stick here, I think it is. 
we've been pretty much just compressing it down and you, you probably can't see in this bit yet but as soon as you hit that Dustin's just doing it now as soon as you hit it look at it compress and it's almost like nature's cement it's really really good and it's making life a lot easier for us although it's not easy to dig up it is easy to compress and put back in the ground so that's the stage we're at and we've got all of these holes around here still to do
So who spotted the first mistake that we made? It wouldn't be a Centre Dustin, it wouldn't be a TA Outdoors video if we didn't have a mistake. What we've got is our cross beams here. All the posts are in the ground now, we've buried them all, and it is a different day. The weather is pretty horrendous today, the ground's really wet. It's just as well we buried the posts while we did because the clay is like sludge now. But we're, Dustin's just cutting the beams and the mistake we made was originally we were going to put the beams on all of the all of the middle of the post which you probably saw me do earlier and then we're going to put one beam on top of each on the other beam and peg it through the top into the post the difficulty with that is if the beams at different heights like this where it's staggered as the rafters lean down on them that means that the rafters are going to be all wavy and the, the kind of battening that goes around the rafters is, is going to be wavy, which means all the thatch that goes around the house when we thatch it is just going to be like that. And luckily, what was it, about 10 minutes into doing this, Dustin? Yeah, about that. <laughs> literally 10 minutes into doing it, we, stopped, we, we literally stopped and went, so, something's not right here. Yeah, yeah. And then thank God we did, because we've only made the mistake on the first two posts and beams. If we had done it on like the 14th one, we'd have been crying. But um, so the plan has changed. We need these all at the same height until we get to the front near the entrance where we're gonna do something a little bit different. So let me take you closer and just show you. So what we've done, you can see here where I flattened that off with the draw knife. That was originally so that this would sit on, on top flush like that and not be uh, wobbling off. But obviously we made the mistake where the beams have to be the same height. Uh, so ignoring that flat bit there, that is only on this piece of wood, it won't be on the rest of them. What we've done is we've cut this at an angle, and well, we didn't really cut that one at an angle, we probably still should cut it at an angle, just so they're a bit more flush. That way that covers the hole that I've made. Remember the rafters are gonna go over this hole anyway, and there's gonna be thatch over it. So it, it, although I've basically wasted time, there's not gonna be water getting in there, except now when there's uh, no roof above it. So we've cut those, We've if I turn this on its side without losing it, uh, Dustin's just flattened them off there, just just to keep it, because it, round wood on, on anything is, is going to wobble. So you want to stop that lateral movement. And to do that, you need to make it nice and flush. So that's what we've done. We've, we've cut a little um, flush joint just there. And then we're just matching them up at a nice little angle. Again, all by eye, just a nice angle. And we're not, we're not they're, they're overlapping about halfway of the log. And we're not making this notch too deep. If we made this too deep, we're going to weaken the structure of this beam. And we don't want to do that. So we've made them just, you know, probably an inch. Obviously it varies depending on the thickness of each log, but the idea is we've been swinging on these. I can put all my weight on these and it's not going anywhere. So I, you know, with all the weight on the rafters, everything's being transferred weight wise down into these vertical posts. And, and that should help, uh, you know, with all that support there anyway. So that's the plan. We've now got quite a few more of these to do. We're gonna crack on and see how many we can get done. Uh, but we're glad we made that mistake nice and early. Who was paying attention? I'll tell you what, that sawhorse is so much better. Yeah. The, that's rigid. Look at those beams in. Are we doing the <laughs> rafters? Not peeling them? Yeah. But they'll be quick because they're thin. Right, they won't be too bad. Any sort of post beam that we, we're going to use, we should definitely peel. Because the, bug, the bugs will just get in it and it will just start to rot quicker. That's the sound of this. Music to every outdoorsman's ears. Did you just make that cut? I just trimmed that off. Okay, that. yeah, yeah. Is okay. Uh, so this side. On my side. Tilt down. That's it. Yeah, that's good.
So be the back. So once again, staying on the theme of the behind the scenes, Mike's about to do his close out, which you've probably all just seen in this video, and this is how he does it. <laughs> Three, two, one. Well, we're gonna round off the episode there, guys. It's been really fun, really enjoyable. It's been a wet day. It's been miserable. We've had plenty of rain today. It's just as well we dug those clay posts in the other day because the clay is like sludge now. It's absolute mud pie. It's not compressing, well, it's compressing almost too good. It's just all, all squidging down and the posts, you know, will, will start to wobble if we play around with them. So we were lucky with that the other day, getting those posts in. You can see the progress we've made now. All those beams are level, which is what we wanted. We haven't pegged them in. That's gonna be part of the next episode where we secure them to the vertical posts. And then we've obviously got rafters and things to do, but we're making good progress, we're pretty pleased. Uh, and obviously we had that epic duck feast in the Dutch oven, that was really good. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series, hopefully you're enjoying this episode. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Dustin has been filming his behind the scenes of, uh, of this episode and the other episode as well. If you'd like to see that, his channel is in the link dis uh, in the video description below. Bushcraft Tools, I'll put, I'll put everything you need to know down there. And also, Christmas is coming. Christmas is around the corner. For those that are looking to help support TA Outdoors, TA Fishing, uh, we do have a range of merchandise available at taofficial.com. The postage deadlines are coming up pretty fast for Christmas, so if you'd like to get yours in time for Christmas, uh, you need to start thinking about that now, maybe for a friend, family, or a loved one. Today I'm wearing the Woodsman one, which is actually one of the original ones I, I got designed, uh, with my Polish Lavu and the little wood stove and a nice backdrop. It says Woodsman and TA Outdoors, but there's other designs out there, including uh, the Bushcraft Brotherhood, which is by far my most popular design. Um, you guys seem to really enjoy that one. So we've got Bushcraft Brotherhood, Woodsman, we've got the Living Good in the Woods design, and obviously the TA official, the TA Outdoors official Axe logo as well. Um, they're on t-shirts, cups, mugs, hoodies, uh, and we do pretty much ship worldwide. So if you're looking to um, give someone a gift this Christmas and help support the channels, uh, that would be really awesome. And you can get those at taofficial.com. There's links in the description. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It's been a blast, it's been wet, it's been fun. We're learning, we're making mistakes and we're learning even more. We love making work for ourselves, but at the end of the day, we're just uh, you know, getting a little bit more in touch with our ancestors and, and what they did and maybe how they thought things. I guess they made mistakes as well. Uh, maybe next episode, I will also go through a bit more details about the, the history of Celts uh, and the Celtic roundhouses uh, in a little bit more detail but thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it and we will see you guys in episode 3